Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to switch gears a little bit. We've talked in the last se several sections about acid-base reactions and doing calculations with what we call titrations when we bring acids and bases together. Now we've talked about different kinds of acids. We've talked about the strong acids and the weak acids. We've talked about the strong bases and the weak bases. And most of all, I think up till now, you've probably noticed that all of these acid-base reactions occur in solution. In other words, they occur in, in water, basically. And that's super important because most of the planet is water, most of your body is water, and so lots of interesting chemistry happens in water solution. That's, and acids and bases are a part of that. It's really important. Now, what you've probably noticed up till now is that <clears throat> with these acids that go into solution, they dissociate, they break down into their ions, right? And then you also probably notice that these bases go into solution and they dissociate into their op, uh, ions. And so we say, okay, the hydrogen ions from over here combine with the OH, the hydroxide ions over here, and they form water, right? So that was happening over and over again when we did some of these, some of these uh, chemical reactions before, right? But the point is, is that the, the reactants, the acids and the bases, for the most part, always dissociated in water, which means they break down into these ions, and so everything can mix into this nice soup and the chemistry can happen. Right? What we're going to start to talk about here is start to change gears a little bit. It turns out that not all ionic compounds actually dissolve in water. I mean, I think you can, you can imagine lots of things that don't dissolve in water. You know, put a block of wood in water, it doesn't dissolve, right? So there's lots of things, lots of chemicals, that if you pull off the shelf and sprinkle them in water, they're not going to dissolve. They'll just float, they'll sink to the bottom, but that's going to be it. They're not going to actually disappear and dissolve and, and dissociate. So those things that actually just sit there and don't do anything, if you have a chemical reaction between two entities, all right, and some of the products are dissolved, then you're not going to see them. But if you have a chemical reaction between two entities and one of the products kind of forms, but the product doesn't actually dissolve in water, then what's going to happen is you're going to start to see that product kind of appear before your very eyes, and it's going to sink to the bottom, right? And so it's important in order to be able to predict what's going to happen with reactions to know which compounds are soluble and which compounds are insoluble, it means they don't dissolve in water. And what we're going to do is, is build a chart here of guidelines to teach you when you can predict if a compound is going to dissolve in water or not. If it's going to dissolve, we call it soluble. And if it's not going to dissolve, we call it insoluble. And this is going to be important in a few sections, well actually in the next section, when we begin to predict reactions. So again, in this section we're going to give you some guidelines. I'm going to teach you how you can predict if, an, if a compound is going to dissolve in water or not. In your textbook, whatever book you're using, there should be a chart very similar to what I'm going to put on the board. Uh, it may be organized different, it may look a little different, but it should have basically the same information to let you predict if something's going to dissolve or not. But I want you to keep in mind the roadmap where we're going. You know, if you mix you know, an acid and a base, they're both dissolved, you know, and the products are, are all dissociated as well. So you don't see anything necessarily happening. It's just a clear solution. But if I take any two clear solutions off the shelf in a chemistry lab and mix them together, I may get a chemical reaction where one of the products, I might get a reaction where one of those products is not soluble in water. And if that's the case, then it's going to kind of kind of come out of solution as a little solid and sink to the bottom of the test tube or something like that. That's called a precipitate. So in the few sections, you know, next section on, we're going to talk about precipitation reactions where we mix two things and we're trying to predict if something's going to settle out of solution or not. So they're actually some of the coolest reactions in chemistry.